Hello and welcome back to India Business Insights. Today we are diving into the heart of one of the global leaders in technology and business solutions, Wipro Limited. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay updated as we take you through the realm of Wipro. Let's have a look at the history and evolution. Wipro is a very unusual company amongst the Indian IT companies. Older than independent India, Wipro took its first breath in the aftermath of World War II in 1945. The company was incorporated on 29 December 1945 in Amal Nair, India by Mohammad Premji. It was then known as Western India Products Limited. Its main area of business was vegetable oil, later sold under the brand name Sunflower Vanaspati. The company also launched laundry bars under the brand name 787. Later on, it moved to soaps and other consumer care products. Just after one year of its establishment, the company filed for IPO in 1946. Over the next 20 years, the company experienced a substantial and rapid expansion. Mohammad Hussain's son, Azim, was studying at Stanford in the year 1966. He had to come back to India after the untimely death of his father at the age of 51. He took over Wipro as its chairperson at the age of 21. He wasn't welcomed wholeheartedly by the shareholders. However, by virtue of owning majority shares, nobody could do much. Azim Premji was a man of determination and vision. He transformed the business into diversified fields by shedding its original identity as a vegetable oil mill. In 1977, the new government led by Moraji Desai was against FDI and foreign companies. It required foreign companies to dilute their stake in local operations and transfer technology. IBM was ready to pass on the technology, but they were not willing to dilute the equity stake. So when IBM left India, there was a big opportunity for Indian companies to step into its shoes. Thus, Wipro shifted its focus to new opportunities in the IT and computing industry. At that time, the largest company was International Computers Limited, that is ICL, which was a subsidiary of ICL in UK. Other larger players were ORG, DCM, HCL and a host of all other small players. On 7th June 1977, the name of the company changed from Western India Vegetable Products Limited to Wipro Products Limited. In 1982, the name was changed again from Wipro Products Limited to Wipro Limited. Premji then began to steer the company toward the computer business. The initial foray into the IT industry involved manufacturing computers. In August 1979, Wipro recruited its first members of the Infotech division. Two months later, Wipro applied for a license to develop, manufacture and market mini computers from Sentinel Computer Corp. USA. Their first mini computer, Wipro Series 86, was launched in 1981. Their first customer was Breaks India Limited, which is a commercial organization that produced Breaks for TVS Group. And subsequently, they sold to United Breweries and several other government and private sectors. What gave an edge to Wipro was that they initially started with R&D and then did manufacturing, marketing and other things because most companies started with marketing first and then somehow tried to get the machines. So Wipro had an advantage of technology because they understood what they were offering to the customers. To gain credibility, Wipro stressed on after-sale services. Wipro sold directly to corporate customers and provided after-sale service directly. When its name and brand were established, Wipro began selling through a deal network and began assembling products made by such well-known companies as Canon, Cisco Systems, Epson, HP and Sun. It also distributed software from Adobe, Boland and Netscape and began designing and manufacturing peripherals like dot matrix printers. Then came the Y2K boom in the mid to late 90s. For those who are too young to be familiar with it, Y2K arose because many computer systems and software applications represented four-digit years with only the last two digits. As a result, there were concerns that when the calendar rolled over to the year 2000, the system might interpret 00 as 1900 instead of 2000, leading to potential software failures and data inaccuracies. In 1998, Wipro announced the establishment of a center dedicated to addressing the Y2K problem with a focus on making hardware and operating systems compliant. Wipro Super Genius Personal Computers became the only Indian PC range to obtain the US-based National Software Testing Laboratory Certification for Y2K compliance. The positive impact of Y2K was that many Indian companies like Infosys, TCS, Wipro scaled up.
Like a lot of other companies, Wipro began to leverage relationships with large international companies with Y2K work and others to build large software outsourcing businesses. In 2000, Wipro listed itself in US through American Depository Receipts or ADRs. Simultaneously, Wipro emerged as India's leading software exporter in 2000 ahead of Infosys. While Wipro was expanding in IT sector, it also diversified in hydraulic cylinders, medical systems, lightings, etc. But Wipro demerged non-IT business divisions, including consumer product segment into a privately held company, Wipro Enterprises, effective from March 31st, 2013, to allow both businesses to pursue their individual growth strategies. Thus, Wipro Limited became a company focused on the IT services business and remained a publicly listed company while Wipro Enterprises is an unlisted company. Wipro was one of the best performing stocks from 1998 to 2003 on the Indian stock exchanges. During that period, Azim Premji stayed as the richest Indian. In 2013, he agreed to give away at least half of his wealth by signing the giving pledge. Premji started with a $2.2 billion donation to the Azim Premji Foundation focused on primary education in India. In 2019, Azim Premji announced his retirement and his son Rashid Premji was appointed as the company's executive chairman. Products and Services Let's now talk about the various products and services made by Wipro that are now available in the market. So Wipro has basically three segments, the IT services, IT products and ISRE. IT services offerings are categorized under four global business lines or GBLs. First is the Wipro Full Stride Cloud. It combines all their cloud capabilities into a seamlessly integrated comprehensive package, forming a complete cloud services delivery system from start to finish. Second, we have Wipro Enterprise Futuring. They provide forward-looking solutions for significant enterprise transformation by integrating intelligent insights, enterprise data, applications platform, digital operations, and cybersecurity risk services. It utilizes advanced technologies like AI and AR or VR to enhance the transformation process. Third, we have Wipro Engineering Edge. Broadens their offerings in emerging technologies including cloud, 5G, industry 4.0, IoT, silicon design, embedded systems, and data and AI platform. The Wipro Consulting brings together Capco, Designit, and Wipro's domain and consulting business under a global line, driving enhanced experience sharing. If we talk about the IT products, the company provides IT products majorly as a complement to its IT service offerings rather than sell standalone IT products. Some IT products are Wipro Homes. It is an artificial intelligence and automation platform designed to automate repetitive tasks and enhance business processes. Second, we have Wipro Virtua Desk. It is a virtual desktop infrastructure or VDI solution to provide secure and flexible desktop access for users. Apart from this, Wipro's ISRE segment consists of IT services, offerings to organizations owned or controlled by the Government of India or any Indian state governments. Their ISRE strategy focuses on consulting and digital engagements with ISRE customers. Then we have research and innovation. Not only this, but Wipro also continues to push the boundaries of research and development in order to bring cutting-edge technologies to clients. With the rise of global communication, code mixing has become a prevalent digital linguistic phenomenon. Code mixing refers to us humans expressing ourselves in a mixture of two languages, example Hindi and English. Wipro has built high-performance models that recognize and generate code-mixed expressions. It aims to unlock the potential of code mixing for various applications, including language learning, machine translation, and digital assistance. With over 60% of the world's population speaking more than one language, code mixing abilities provide a more natural and more accessible interface for digital services. Wipro is also developing robotics for indoor inventory management and movement. Their research focuses on the development of robots that can work alongside human workers, improving efficiency and productivity. Wipro is also investing in technologies that allow them to classify memes supported by explanations. This offers their clients the ability to support meme content moderation as well as engage in culturally sensitive marketing and messaging with their customers. Thus, by bringing innovation to the table, Wipro benefits its clients and the world at large. 
Apart from investing in innovation, Wipro has been committed to sustainability and has implemented various initiatives to reduce its environmental impact. The company has set ambitious targets for reducing its carbon footprint, optimizing energy consumption and promoting sustainable practices within its operations. Wipro also has a strong focus on corporate social responsibility or CSR. The company is involved in education, healthcare and other social programs to make a positive impact on society. Let's have a look at Wipro and AI's interconnection. Wipro is experiencing significant growth in AI development and deployment. Recent advances in user-friendly generative AI capable of producing text, image, audio and synthetic data have raised concerns about privacy and misinformation. To ensure responsible AI practices, they implement a privacy by design approach, prioritizing fair data handling and equitable AI outcomes. Wipro has implemented AI360 strategy under which AI is now embedded across most of its existing solutions and client offerings. However, their commitment goes beyond guidelines and frameworks. Their aim is to use AI responsibly for the greater good. Wipro's position. Let's now talk about Wipro's position in India. From being a top giant in the Indian IT industry in the early 2000s, it has somehow lost its position to TCS, Infosys and HCL. For instance, in the early 2000s, Wipro was the second largest player in the industry, but then Infosys took over. It recorded a revenue of Rs 2,603 crore, while Wipro recorded revenue of Rs 2,300 crore. In 2018, HCL Tech surpassed Wipro to become the third largest IT service provider. HCL Tech registered $8.6 billion to Wipro's $8.1 billion. Currently, Wipro is the fourth largest IT company in India after TCS, Infosys and HCL. Key financial highlights. As on 31st March 2023, the net worth of the company was about Rs 782 billion. The company sales increased to Rs 904,876 billion for the current year as against Rs 790,934 million in the previous year, recording an increase of 14.41%. The compounded annual sales growth in the recent 10 years in dollars terms is 6%. The growth of the company has lagged behind its peer group of TCS, Infosys and HCL Tech and also companies like Tech Mahindra in the recent years. The company is organized into the following operating segments, IT services, IT products and India state-run enterprise segment that is ISRE. If we can talk about the IT services segment revenue, it is increased to Rs 897,478 million by 14.8% for the year ended on March 31st, 2023, compared to Rs 781,824 million for the year ended on March 31st, 2022. ID services made up nearly 98.7% of the total revenue. This is the largest segment of the company and includes its large IT export and related services. Revenue from the IT product segment decreased by 2% to 6047 million. It made up nearly 0.66% of the total revenue. Revenue from the ISRE segment decreased by 20.2% to Rs 5,823 million in the fiscal year of 2023 compared to Rs 7,295 million revenue in fiscal year of 2022, primarily due to the completion of certain large SI deals during the year ended March 31st, 2022. It made up to 0.64% of the total revenue. Moving forward to revenue segments in terms of geography, company has a revenue contribution of 31% from Americas, 2 followed by 29.2% from Americas 1, 28.6% from Europe and finally 11.3% from APMEA. While Americas 1 and Americas 2 are organized by sectors, Europe and APMEA or APMEA are structured by countries. Americas 1 includes healthcare and medical devices, consumer goods and life sciences, retail, transportation and services, communication, media and info services, tech products and platforms, and Latin America. Americas 2 includes banking, securities, investment banking and insurance, manufacturing, high-tech, energy and utilities, and Canada. Europe includes UK and Ireland, Switzerland, Germany, Benelux, Nordics and Southern Europe, while APMIA will include Australia and New Zealand, India, Middle East, Southeast Asia, Japan and Africa. 
Wipro supports customers from a wide variety of verticals including banking, finance, consumer, health, manufacturing, technology, energy and communications. If we talk about sector-wise revenue from banking financial services, an insurance makes up about 34.9% of the revenue followed by consumer which makes up 18.8% of the revenue and health which makes up 11.8% of the revenue. Net income margin for the company was 12.5% in 2023 as compared to 15.4% in 2022. IT services operating margin for the quarter ended 31st December 2023 was at 16% down by 11 basis points quarter on quarter. The gross employee utilization rate for Wipro was 72.85% in fiscal year of 2023, while that of TCS and Enforces were 85.4% and 76.9% respectively. This signifies that Wipro probably has far too many people on the bench. The number of $100 million plus customers remains 19 in the FY23. For the quarter ended on 31st December 2023, Wipro had $3.8 billion order booking with 14 large deal wins. Comparing Wipro's net profit margins with those of its peer, it is 13.54%, which comparatively is lower than TCS Infosys and HCL, which have net profit margins of 20.54%, 18.76% and 24.76% respectively. It has the fourth largest market capitalization after TCS Infosys and HCL. A detailed comparison with the peers is given below. Why Wipro was successful and are the Wipro glory years behind us? Since over 75 years, the company's journey from a modest entity to a technological giant is a source of inspiration to many. The company is the first PCMM Level 5 and SEI CMM Level 5 certified IT services company globally. At the heart of Wipro's success in its relationship with over 1,400 active global clients, showing the company's commitment to providing exceptional service and solutions. Wipro is home to more than 2,40,000 dedicated, high-quality employees worldwide. Another noteworthy thing about Wipro is that it also empowers its senior management. The company has been named as 2021 world's most ethical company for the 10th successive year by the Ethisphere Institute. With its footprint in 66 countries, Wipro seamlessly integrates the global with the local, ensuring the delivery of comprehensive solutions that resonate with local market dynamics while maintaining international standards of excellence. Apart from this, as of Jan 2024, 72.9% of the company shares, which is a major chunk, are held by the promoters, which is another reason for the company's success. The company had excellent relationship with GE, which was one of the early proponents of outsourcing from India and was one of the most successful global companies in the 1990s. It also successfully recruited prominent Indian NRIs and global professionals who were given responsible positions at the helm of the company. While Wipro continues to be a respected name in its IT and IT services field, in the recent years its growth has been somewhat subdued and it has lagged behind its peer group both in growth as well as profitability. In fact, Wipro has lagged behind its peers in margins, growth, profitability and employee productivity. So are the best years of Wipro behind us? That is something only time can tell. The recent years have not been particularly good for the industry. Let's have an industry overview. If we talk about global economic activity in 2023, it experienced a sharper than expected slowdown. The near-term outlook remains highly uncertain with downside risks from the unpredictable course of the geopolitical conflict in Europe, continued impact from tighter monetary policy, inflation and recession fears, pressures in global energy markets and financial market volatility. However, technology spending is forecasted to increase with enterprises investing in value-driven transformation focused on areas like cloud transformation, automation, integration of AI, data analytics, and cybersecurity as their top priorities. The IT services industries is expected to accelerate and drive decisions in the fiscal year of 2024. According to the Strategic Review 2023 published by NASCOM, revenue for the Indian IT services sector is expected to witness growth of 8.3% year-on-year in fiscal year of 2023. 
In conclusion, Wipro is guided by Azim Premji through four decades of diversification and growth to emerge as one of the global leaders in the software industry. The day-to-day activities of Wipro are run by an experienced management team. The company has a portfolio of strong established brands in both India and international markets. The company faces competition from other prominent players in the global IT services industry, which limits its pricing flexibility to an extent. Moreover, the industry continues to face challenges in the form of foreign currency fluctuations, talent acquisition and retention. The demand for IT services remains exposed to macroeconomic uncertainties in Wipro's key operating markets of the US, Europe and India. Wipro has relatively lower operating margins as compared to some of its peers and in recent quarters. The company is undertaking an organization-wide transformation exercise to improve its operational efficiency, which is expected to support margin expansion over the medium term. Moreover, the company continues to focus on retaining its talent pool and have also suitably filled up leadership positions, both through internal as well as lateral hiring, which will support future growth. As we navigate the digital future, Wipro's commitment to sustainability, diversity and cutting edge solutions is not just commendable but inspiring. We hope this video has given you valuable insights into Wipro's journey and the remarkable strides it continues to make. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of Wipro's legacy and we look forward to witnessing the continued success and innovation from this industry leader. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more such content. Your support means the world to us. Stay curious, stay engaged. Until next time.